So as enthusiasts, we've dealt with this problem before. Actually, some of us have probably dealt with it more times than what we can imagine. And yeah, you know what, it is very tedious and bothersome, especially in the summertime. All those many, many gallons of precious gasoline that you paid probably four or five dollars a gallon for is usually burned for really no reason at all. All because of one simple carburetor malfunction. So as enthusiasts, we all know what happens when the choke refuses to go off, especially when the engine warms up to operating temperatures. Yeah. Well, and for some of you young pups out there, well, hey, what am I saying? I'm still a young pup. I'm only 25. But for you young pups out there that maybe just your granddad just gave you his old truck and, it, you know, you've got it going, but all of a sudden the choke won't kick off, well, I'll tell you what's going to happen. You see, as soon as you turn the key off, the engine still rotates for briefly half a second. It'll, ro it'll rotate for about three seconds if the engine is running at about 2,000 RPM. If the cylinder heads are hot, what is going to happen is the airflow that is entering through the intake, thanks to the carburetor being, the choke being on, the throttle plates are opened up a little further than what they're supposed to. This is in return going to allow fresh air into the intake and what it's going to do is when the number three cylinder, when the number three piston comes up on a compression stroke, the heat from the cylinder head is going to ignite and force that piston back down and then the number seven cylinder is going to say, hey, this looks like fun. I want in on this fun and I want to do the same thing with cylinder number three did. So cylinder number three is going to come up on a compression stroke, fire its way back down and then the number one cylinder say, hey, I feel left out, man. This ain't no fair and so forth. And in return, subsequently, thanks to this mischievous um, ignition firing, it is going to create a very awful and erratic clacking, sputtering, wheezing sound that is known to the Chevy uh, community and to enthusiasts all around the world as dieseling. Yes, your engine is going to diesel. If you don't know what dieseling is, I'm going to show you what dieseling is right now. problem at hand is, well now, wait a second, what if my choke plate is open? Does that not mean that, hey, my choke is functioning properly? You would hope, but how come my choke isn't kicking down when I am forcing the accelerator through the floor pan? Well, I'm going to explain it to you. Let's go in the nice warm garage so we can have a better look at a four barrel Rochester carburetor that is not mounted to the intake. Let's go. Okay, so with our choke pull off, I'm gonna disconnect this hose here and the linkage for our damper. Remove the pull off. Now we can see, we can have a better viewing here of the inside components behind here. This is our linkage. This is our, our high idle cam. Uh, here is the set screw. Uh, I have made a video before on how to uh, adjust the idle for your fast idle. Uh, this is where you do it. It is right here. Okay, so uh, you notice that everything here is our thermostat. This is our thermostatic housing. And right in behind here is where all the good stuff is. Our linkage for our fast idle also controls our choke plate. Now, if you undercoat your vehicle every year, there's a good chance there's a whole bunch of sediment and deposits that build up in the linkage area here. And what this will do is cause a very, very difficult time to kick down the high idle with all that deposits that are built up. Now I've seen people take carburetor cleaner for example, they'll spray the linkages and then they'll let all the sediment run down. Not a good idea to let that happen. So please don't do that. Get, when you're going to clean your carburetor, the exterior linkages of your carburetor, get a rag under there so it'll soak up the, uh, the uh, uh, fallen particles that are going to be running down. Now, that is the main concern when you're dealing with 
uh, a troublesome kick down. Either the heat riser pipe is to blame. If the heat riser isn't functioning, your high idle isn't going to be kicking down, obviously. Now, let's say, for example, the choke plate is fully open. Okay, we can see the air horn here. Choke plate is open. High idle refuses to kick down. Nine times out of ten, I can pretty much guarantee you guys, dead to rights, that it's linkage. Okay, so give this a spray. Now, we're going to talk about the carburetor out of the way for a minute. Let's talk about different types of spray. We got this, we got this, and we got that. Which one of these three products should you not use? You guys guess? Any guesses? No? Okay, I'm going to tell you. This guy here, okay, a lot of people figure, you know what, it's petroleum based, it's a lubricant, it'll help free up uh, linkages. Sure it does. Problem with this is I see way too many people using this stuff on things that they shouldn't. In the summertime, if you drive your car down dusty roads, or even in general driving your vehicle, it, you know, you're going to have dust regardless. This will stick to everything. The dust will stick to everything that you spray this liquid on, okay? If you spray your linkages with this and the fan starts to engage when you start the car, Every bit of dust and airborne fallout is going to be attacked and attracted to the linkages that you spray this on. A lot of people use this on sticky door locks. And in return, this will make life worse. So chuck that. We don't need it. We don't want that. This stuff is the right stuff to use. If you don't have that, this stuff will even suffice just as good. Like I say, uh, you're going to have a big mess when you spray this stuff. Um, this stuff will clean a carburetor linkages, no doubt about that. Um, but here we have traditional carburetor cleaner. Um, it costs generally around uh, $5 a can, so like I say, that's the stuff you should be using. Uh, brake cleaner is also sufficient. WD-40 or fluid film or any type of uh, petroleum-based lubricant like that, of that nature, I personally do not recommend using. So when you're dealing with high idle that refuses to kick down uh, and your choke plate is open or at least half open there's a good chance that your choke your thermostat is functioning the way it's supposed to it's just there is a problem with the linkages so what to do to remedy this situation is take your carburetor cleaner spray the linkages thoroughly this can is empty of course I'm just using this as a reference spray this car and this carburetor is clean anyway I just cleaned it so spray the linkages down decent, uh, get them saturated, then move the linkages back and forth to get everything nice and cleaned up. Uh, make sure they are moving freely because this is what you want. You want everything to be moving freely. You don't want anything stiff. Then while you're at it, while you're cleaning the, your linkages for your high idle, make sure you do the same to your throttle as well. Get that all sprayed up. Your pumper, spray the linkages here as well and uh, check for any vacuum hoses that could be broken while you're at it, while you're dealing with the carburetor, always inspect all that. And once you get everything uh, sprayed down and cleaned off, your high idle will work just fine. And if it doesn't, then you have a problem elsewhere, either with the heat riser or your pull-off, or your thermostat might not be uh, having the proper voltage. But if you don't have the proper voltage, there's a good chance that your choke is remaining shut. Okay, but if your choke plate is open and the high idle refuses to kick down or maybe it'll kick down to the second step of the high idle cam but it won't go any lower, there's a good chance that it's your linkages.